Welcome to our summary on speed. So, first thing we actually need to know for this one is, as with all of our physics topics that we're going to look at, any time that there is an equation, then you'll find it on page two of your exam booklet. So you don't have to memorize any of these equations, you've just got to know how to use them and how to then rearrange them. So, our first one here then is, if we want to calculate our speed, then it's going to be distance divided by time. So you can put that into a triangle, just like we've got in the bottom right hand corner there. And that'll help you to rearrange the equation if they were to ask you for the speed or the time. And the way that works is you just cover up the thing that they're asking you to actually work out. So if we were asked to work out the distance, you'd cover up the distance and then the calculation is speed times time. If we needed to work out the time, cover up time and it would be distance divided by speed and so on. Now, one thing to bear in mind is that they might ask you to write down the units for your calculation. And at that point, you'd obviously have to look back at the units for the distance, first of all. So you put those in, then a slash, and then the units for your time after that. To give you an example, then, of the kind of question that you might be asked, then we've got an example here for you. So Usain Bolt ran 100 metres in 9.58 seconds. On average, how fast did he run? So the equation, as I said, you'd find on page two, which is speed equals distance divided by time. Now our distance from the actual question is 100 meters. The time is 9.58 seconds. So all we have to do there is 100 divided by 9.58 gives us 10.4 and then it's meters per second. So at the top, what we've got there then is just the rearranged equation. And again, you will find that on page two of your exam booklet, that distance equals your average speed times by the time. So you don't even have to rearrange it for that one. It's all printed on page two. Now, one thing to bear in mind is that the speed is going to be changing in some instances. Now, if that's the case, we might want to work out the average speed in order to calculate the distance. Now, in the bottom left, we can see the equation that we need to use for that, which is our initial speed plus the final speed divided by two. And those can also be changed into letters there for you. So our initial speed is U and the final speed is V. What we've got here then is just a worked equation to show you how we can use these two calculations together. So the question that we've got there, the initial speed of a car is five meters per second. It traveled 300 meters in 20 seconds what was the car's final speed. First thing we need to do then is work out the average speed because we've got our distance and we've got our time in the question. So what we're gonna do there is 300 divided by 20 and that gives us the average speed of 15 meters per second. Now what we've got is our average speed and our initial speed from the question. So we can put those two numbers into that second formula. So that gives us 15 equals 5 plus V divided by 2. What we need to do now then is to rearrange that equation. And the key thing to remember there is in order to rearrange an equation, whatever you do to one side, you have to do to the other as well. So first of all, to get rid of that divide by 2, we have to multiply each side by 2. So that will give us 30 equals 5 plus V. And then to get rid of the five, so we're just left with V on that right hand side, we just take five away from each side. So 30 minus five gives us 25 meters per second, which is the final speed of our car. The last question they might ask you about to do with speed is to do with speed cameras. Now, what we need to remember first of all is that a speed camera measures how fast vehicles are actually traveling. And obviously the police will use them in order to issue fines when people break speed limits. Now, we've got two different types of speed camera that we need to remember how they work for. So our first one is that standard speed camera you've probably seen on the road. So you've got your speed camera on the side of the road and on the road itself, there are a series of white lines painted on the surface. Now what happens is, as that car passes over those painted lines, you get two pictures taken by that speed camera, which are 0.2 seconds apart. Now those lines on the road are a set distance apart, and since we can count how many lines the car's gone over, we know how far it's gone, the distance. We know the time, because the two pictures were taken 0.2 seconds apart, and that means we can then just feed those numbers into our speed equals distance divided by time calculation to work out the speed the car was traveling at. 
the second type of speed camera that they've started using on motorways, particularly where we've got roadworks or if you happen to be going around the M25, is the average speed cameras. Now, the way these work is it's not just a single camera, but a pair of cameras that are a set distance apart. So again, we know the distance between the two cameras. And then what happens is as the car passes the first camera, the license plate is recorded along with the time. And then as it passes the second camera further down the road, again, it records the license plate and the time. From those two pictures, we can work out, obviously, how long it took the car to travel the known distance. So we've got our distance divided by time once more to give us our speed.